Well, here we are again. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. And I have really prayed about this, and I have a church praying about it, that uh, these little 10 minute excerpts might reach around the world. It might help those of you who are interested in studying the Word of God and care to do that. The only way you can care to do that is you must have salvation first. The first, the most, the very first thing you must have is salvation. There was a time in the present world that we live in that uh, men did not run around and lay down with women they weren't married to. And there is all kinds of uh, terminologies in the Bible that t say what kind of man that is. They say he's a whole monk if he lays around with women he's not married to. And there are many people today who claim to know Jesus Christ, who claim to know the Word of God in the Bible, who are homemongers. They're not married to God. They have never asked Jesus Christ to come in their heart and save their soul. And therefore, they don't belong in the book. No more than they belong in bed with a woman. Now, you need to be married. If you're not married, then you cannot receive, if you're living with a woman and you're harboring that in your life, you cannot receive what Brother Peter's telling you today. You can hear it, but you cannot receive it. Listen, you cannot live in open sin and be blessed by the Word of God because he said, Blessed is he that readeth and keepeth my commandments. The Bible says that he will not hear the prayer of a man living in iniquity. If you're living in iniquity, God is not going to hear your prayer. I see people today, even in the good church, a good Bible-believing, Bible-preaching, Bible-oriented church, I see them come in with a woman that they are not legally married to, and they live with her. And they sit down, and they sit there, and they sit there. And they sit there, and they come, and they come, and they come, and they're searching. But they can't find, and the reason they can't find is their ears aren't open. And their ears can't be opened because they're living in open sin. Now, the truth of the matter is, is they really hear, but they're in rebellion. They hear this, get married, make it right, and then God will bless you. God cannot bless evil. He cannot bless evil. Okay. Now, we got that behind us. Now, if you're a man and you're in a church and you're messing with the world on a daily basis, every day, you come to church on Sunday morning and through the week, you act like a hellion. You're not saved. You are not saved. I say, Brother Peter, how can you say that? Well, judge yourself. Judge yourself. Uh, find somebody who is a Christian, who lives for Christ, as close to the Lord, and yes, that guy's probably going to sin some, but lives as close to the Lord as he can, and judge yourself by what you see. Don't, we're really not supposed to judge yourself by each other, but you can pick out a man that you believe is close to God. Now, don't put your faith in him, because he will discourage you. He will fall. He will one day do a sin or something that you think, well, I didn't see, and I put my faith in him. Don't put your faith in him, but you can use him as an example. Now, the examples that I use and that was really supposed to use are the Old Testament saints. And by the way, the punishment that the Old Testament saints got for falling off the wagon was terrible. Was terrible. 
some of God's chosen, very chosen people ended up with a miserable death because they chose to uh, do opposite of what God said. Let's get in the book. In the book, we're in Revelation chapter 1, which is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is showed uh, to this guy, John, by the Holy Spirit. And he's our brother, John. John, and, and, and it was enlightened and showed by the Holy Spirit to bear record of the Word of God and the testament of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw. He said, Blessed is he that readeth, blessed is he that readeth, blessed is he that understandeth, uh, blessed is he that hears with his heart these words, uh, blessed are these uh, things that were written, for the time is at hand. And then he goes on to say, John is writing to the seven churches. Now you are a person in one of those seven churches. There was a church that was not of God. Not at all. Not in nada. No way. God had nothing to do with it. That was a church that was run by men. That was run secular. That was not run according to this word according to the principles of God, according to what the Word says, how the church is supposed to be run, and what, what's supposed to happen in the church. And that church was a heathen church. And the, none of that church, unless there happens to be one in it, that has said, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul, and meant it, then he would go to heaven. But usually a man that has asked Jesus to save him and meant it, will see the error of that church, get out and go find him a real church, one that preaches the true gospel. And look at verse 5 in Revelation. It said, From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead. Now Jesus was the first one that rose from the dead to live forever. Uh, in the flesh and on the earth and in heaven and whatever. And the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood. Jesus came, shed his blood on the cross for you and I, that if we will ask him to forgive us of our sins, come into our heart, Forgive us our sins, he will, and we'll be washed by his blood. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and the Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Listen, the glory that is in man today is the glory of God. And the glory of God is to worship God and to glory God. He, he, de, he desires and already desires. He is worthy of preeminence. He spoke the worlds into existence. And he spoke this special world right here for you and I into existence. If you will look at the cosmos, look at the universe, God said he has many worlds he's taken care of. Many worlds, many planets, many things. The stars, the sun, the moon, uh, Pluto, Jupiter, Mars, all of those are God's too. All of those are his creation. He's tending all of those at the same time. If you were a man that raised chickens, you know how I many chickens you got, wouldn't you? You'd know who those chickens are. You, a lot of people might even name their chickens. If you were raising animals, you know who the animals You know how many cats you got out in the garden. You got one called Snoopy and one Stripe and one Blackie. And you know who they are. And you got, you got several yard dogs. And you know which one's Butch and which one's Brown and which one's Speck and which one's Grouchy. And you know that, don't you? You know the things in your life. If you have a boat, a car, a truck, 
a camp. You know all of those things are yours and you probably